Okay, I guess it's time. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to our Horizon Weekly Insider number uh, 37. Today is, today is April 23, and happy Thursday to you all. Please remember that this call is being recorded and is going to be available in our Horizon podcast as well as in our YouTube channel for you to check out later. Please remember to ask your questions on Menti so we can have our regular Q&A session at the end. Uh, without further ado, I'll pass the word now to Luca to, for, for, for him to give us the updates on the engineering department. Thank you, Angie. Hello, everybody. This week is a great one because we are welcoming a new person to the team. Uh, his name is uh, Luigi and he's a uh, DevOps. This is the first weekly insider for him and I think it would be great to kick it off by having him introducing yourself. Um, so Luigi, would you like to say a few words to uh, for, for the community here? Yes, thank you, Luca. And um, hello again to everyone. Um, and nice to meet you all. <laughs> um, I'm very happy to start uh, this adventure with you. Um, and um, I come from uh, Naples in the south of Italy. Uh, and now I live in Milan. Um, I have always been passionate about uh, the computer science. And since the beginning, um, I've been interested not only in developing, uh, but also and um, maybe mostly in everything about uh, infrastructures and uh, architectures. Uh, so I started working as a system engineer and to later become a DevOps. And during my last two uh, experiences, I tried to evolve myself by working on um, automation, deploying the um, cloud infrastructures, um, and also on data science. Uh, I worked a lot on uh, uh, AWS environments automation, on Elasticsearch stacks, and a lot of things on cloud. Um, Horizon uh, uh, immediately fascinated me uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, I saw in Horizon um, a big international company that works uh, with uh, cutting-edge technologies as well as uh, developing them. Um, and um, also I'm very bullish about the sidechain concept. Uh, so uh, Horizon seemed to me the right place to learn and the right place to face new challenges. Um, try to make a difference and help the organization uh, as much as I can. Um, anyway, I'm very happy to be here. Uh, I thank uh, those uh, who have trusted me uh, and uh, I will do my best to deserve it. <laughs> uh, thank you again to, uh, to all and uh, thank you, Luca. Uh, I, now you, I now will let you continue. Thank you, Luigi. Great introduction of yourself and very happy to have you in the team. Speaking about tech uh, updates, this week is a great one also because we published the two libraries, Zendu Mainchain Cryptolib and Zendu Sidechain Cryptolib. So that is done, that is out. You will find the, the new repos public on GitHub together with the other Ginger library that was already previously published. So this week uh, we did that, but we also proceeded with more and more code review sessions for our road to Sidechain Beta on both the Sidechain SDK and also uh, the main chain side. Alberto uh, is here with us. So, Alberto, if you would like to add anything to this, for example, on the crypto lips, feel free to do so now. And uh, congratulations for them, by the way. Oh, thanks, Luca. Yes, for sure. We can provide some additional info about the two libraries. Um, Okay, uh, Zendu Sidechain CryptoLib and Zendu Mesh CryptoLib are the two libraries that have been, uh, let me say, released uh, during this week. And so uh, the main purpose of them is um, being uh, as like an interface uh, between the SDK and the Gingerlib primitives and from the ZenD implementation and the Gingerlib primitives. So from uh, the Sidechain SDK perspective, uh, that is using the Zendu sidechain CryptoLib, um, the main uh, um, 
goal is to make the Sidechain SDK uh, using, uh, for example, um, VRF uh, implement the VRF implementation that is uh, made in the in the in Gingerlib. So uh, we created this library that act as an interface because uh, we have to expose to the Java implementation of the SDK. Uh, the Rust implementation of uh, of Gingerlib. So we created this um, library in the middle because we wanted to keep uh, separated from a specific purpose Gingerlib. So Gingerlib has just the, the let me say, uh, high-level functions or the most common functions, and then they are uh, exposed by Zendu sidechain CryptoLib uh, via JNI to um, to the SDK. So currently, uh, the exposed functions are um, mainly related to VRF, so that that is required for uh, Ouroboros. So, uh, I mean, a, a forger to be to to demonstrate that it is eligible uh, for uh, issuing a specific block in a specific slot number. Uh, should use, uh, let me say, uh, an algorithm to, to calculate and to prove that he is eligible to do it. So, uh, and this is a VRF, this is the VRF implementation. And so um, we have implemented in in, in Rust, uh, also because we, uh, in Gingerlib, so also because we plan to uh, verify this VRF proof also in a circuit. So, uh, we have also the corresponding gadget in Gingerlib. And so, I mean, having this, this implementation in Rust, then we needed to use this by the SDK, so we created this JNI uh, say interface between, uh, between the two implementations. But moreover, uh, we are using from the SDK um, the, the new circuit, uh, the beta circuit that we have, uh, we have introduced in Zendo Sage and CryptoLib, that is a, a circuit that let you prove, uh, um, let a prover prove that owns um, K of N signatures. Uh, so, and this is just an example circuit that can be used um, for the beta, uh, for the beta um, uh, release to, uh, let me say, um, to be a and attach this kind of proof to the certificate. So the certificate will be signed by K of N signers. Then on the sidechain side will be created a proof that proves that. And this proof, uh, along with the certificate, will be sent to the main chain, and the main chain will then validate the proof against the certificate. And, okay, let's say, and say uh, in, in a totally agnostic way, because uh, main chain doesn't know what is the real uh, meaning behind this proof, but we'll be able to verify this proof against the verification key that is associated with this sidechain and accept or uh, deny the certificate. And so this is, uh, let me say, uh, proof uh, the, the, uh, that the whole system is totally decoupled and uh, and this is what uh, also beta I mean, uh, is going to, um, to include. Uh, obviously, there were there will be uh, many other uh, functionalities exposed by Zendo Sage and CryptoLib, but uh, uh, um, for sh um, this library is a work in progress. We are uh, we will continuously add functionality uh, to it and and extend it. Also, because I mean uh, the the next circuit will be much more complex. Uh, regarding Zendo main chain CryptoLib. Um, let me say uh, beyond the, uh, I mean, the main functions that are going to be used are uh, from main chain are related to, for example, um, Merkle tree calculation. So, uh, <laughs> let me say the the inputs, uh, the data of a certificate has to check has to be checked against the proof. So, how you organize this data? Uh, we organize it, uh, let me say, Merkle trees. So we need to have, let me say, um, um, circuit-friendly Merkle tree. And for this reason, uh, we use Poseidon hash, a Poseidon hash-based Merkle tree. And so uh, we needed, uh, from the main chain side, a way for calculating, uh, uh, given the, the certificate input data, this, this Merkle tree. 
using Poseidon hash. So we expose these kinds of this kind of functionality uh, via uh, Zendu mainchain cryptolib. So by using gingerlib, but uh, with Zendu mainchain cryptolib. And this is one of the functions that uh, mainchain will use through Zendu mainchain cryptolib. But obviously, the other one will be the proof verification. So we will have uh, another um, function exposed by the mainchain cryptolib that is. Um, the, a generic function that will allow mention to verify a proof. And so given a specific verification key associated with a specific sidechain and given, uh, uh, let me say, uh, a certificate and uh, uh, the proof uh, included with the certificate, um, mention will call this function to, the verif to verify this proof uh, with this data. And then we'll be able to decide if accepting or not uh, the certificate. And this is another example of, of the usage of uh, Zendo mentioned CryptoLib. So uh, currently uh, we are proceeding with, with the integration. So uh, obviously on the SDK side and, and on the, on the mention side. So we are we we need to now use these uh, APIs exposed by by these two libraries. And so this is what uh, we are going to do. And uh, that's almost everything from my side. Thanks, Luke. Thank you, Alberto, for the great update. I'll just add that uh, also the work on uh, Sphere by Horizon and the new Explorer is progressing as scheduled and uh, as described already last week. So that's it for now. We'll be available at the end for uh, engineering-related questions. Back to NG for now. Thank you, Luca and Alberto. Let's continue with uh, Alan for some not updates. Hi, all. Thanks, Angie. Um, yesterday, we had an incident on one of the EU servers for the tracking system. It seemed like we had some sort of uh, corruption in the queue where nodes were connecting. We got that sorted out, uh, had to restart the server, but everything seems okay on that now, and we are investigating why that may have taken place so we can take some action on that. I've also been working on updates for the next iteration of the tracking server. And uh, due to schedules and testing, we were hoping to get this out in the next two weeks. We may still do an update um, given the resources that we have, but it may not have all the features that we wanted in it at this point. But we might just at least get uh, some bug fixes in and some optimizations um, but we were working on the ability to do batch search checks and batch um, challenges across servers. And uh, that might not make it into our next update at this point. That's it for now. We'll be updating as we uh, go along and we'll be posting notifications and sending out emails to node operators as we get closer to doing the update itself. Thanks, Angie. Thank you, Alan. Let's continue now with Spencer for the help desk updates. Happy Thursday, everyone. Welcome, Luigi. Uh, this is the report for the service desk for the trailing seven-day period. Uh, there is a written version of this in the text uh, side channel of Weekly Insider. Uh, we continue to roll out new features and benefits on the faucet. Uh, Gustavo can speak to specifics about those. Those new features will generate a significant number of tickets as we can support them. Uh, some brief uh, numbers. Uh, in the last seven days, we resolved 194 tickets. We currently have 202 open tickets. We have 41 waiting for support. Uh, we have 161 items waiting for customer response. Basically, that means that we are staying well ahead of the customers as far as managing those tickets. Our customer satisfaction rating for the last seven days is 4.6 of a possible 5.0 on a basis of 83 user reviews. That is the largest number of reviews we have ever had in a seven-day period. One issue that we gathered from tickets was that users need to be much more careful in recording their backup phrases on off-computer media. We've had a rather distressing number of users who have simply, quote-unquote, forgotten their secret phrases. We want to remind users to both record their secret phrases securely, but also to test them so that they're confident they can recover their Zen before there's an emergency. And that is the report from the service desk. 
Thank you, Spencer. Let's continue with Gustavo for the UX updates. Hey, everyone. Thanks for the update, Spencer. And first and foremost, a uh, warm welcome to our new team member, Luigi. So on the faucet side, uh, last week we released the HODL bonus, which uh, it was received with enthusiasm by the Gower community. So we've been making some uh, little changes on the communication uh, based on the community feedback. So thanks for everyone on the community to provide feedback. And then now we are already working on the new set of features, which I cannot yet disclose. So just keep tuned. And besides that, we also been working on HD and making sure we have it live by Sidechain Beta. And that's all. Thank you, Gustavo. Now let's welcome Rowan for the BD updates. Hello, everyone. Thanks, Angie. Um, no huge updates from me, just to kind of caveat what I'm saying in advance. Uh, my time for the past few days, at least, has been kind of a mixture of back office and also wearing my other hat on the Horizon Lab side. Um, we have in the team just went through results of a recent kind of contractor engagement survey that we pushed out to the team members here. Uh, idea there was to basically make Horizon uh, as strong and, and quick and efficient a place as possible for people to work, nice healthy environment to make sure the team is performing at their best to make sure we can deliver uh, on the roadmap as best as physically possible. Uh, so that survey results have been shared now. Huge thanks to Leslie for putting that together. And the plan is to um, share those results with the community. So we are going to prep for that and probably include it in the next live stream, the next kind of proper presentation live stream where we can talk through slides in a bit of detail. So just a heads up as that's coming on the horizon. In terms of business development, no real huge updates to provide, as I said at the start. We've got a couple of ongoing conversations, but they're too immature at this point for me really to provide any meaty or juicy details. But rest assured, uh, we are working on a variety of things that are pretty exciting, and we'll be talking about them in more detail in weeks to come. Uh, Vano, if you want to pick up and mention anything from your side, please feel free to jump in. Hello, everyone. As Rowan said, uh, things are going on in the background, but nothing uh, that uh, I can share publicly today. Back to you, Angie. Thank you, guys. Now let's continue with Lucy for the marketing updates. Hello, everyone. Happy Thursday. Um, first of all, welcome on board, Luigi. Very uh, uh, excited to have you and uh, congratulations to the engineering team for the uh, expansion. So, okay, marketing updates. Uh, we uh, announced the uh, new newest reward feature on our faucet, uh, just like uh, Gustavo mentioned, sweet huddle bonus. Uh, maybe Jonathan can talk more about it uh, later on. Um, and then also the hashtag how to stay zen campaign is still active. We are asking people to share their secret of um, how they stay zen during this challenging time. And we have been receiving a lot of fun and uh, uh, encouraging responses. So we are picking 10 winners from all the entries and each winner will receive one zen. So we have already picked and announced three winners. So please share your thoughts and tell us how you stay zen. Uh, use hashtag how to stay zen. Uh, and then also we are preparing for a new and fun activity that involves asking community to name something. So, you know, we, we all know how much uh, you guys like this type of involvement. So please stay tuned for more details. Um, and then there also has a uh, uh, I've been uh, quite a bit of updates on our website, thanks to our graphic designer, Linda, and the web developer, Twan, uh, for the beautiful work, as always. Uh, and uh, the work has not uh, yet completed, so we are still working on more updates, including the homepage and implementing some feedback and the suggestions that we have received from our community. So besides the main website, we are also working on uh, giving a total update to our new uh, news site, a store, uh, as well as the faucet website. So there, there will be significant upgrades to some of these sites. So I'm really looking forward to sharing more news with the community very soon. And lastly, we are working on multiple tasks on the background to prepare for the upcoming complete uh, sidechain beta release. And so uh, nothing much I can disclose at the moment, but I I can't wait to share them. Uh, that's all from me. Thank you. I pass it to you, Jonathan. 
Hey everyone, I feel really self-conscious. I I don't know how I sound after Lucy's mic. You sound great. Okay, good, good. <laughs> Um, okay, so yeah, like Lucy mentioned, we released a sweet huddle bonus, which is uh, really exciting. So, just again, why did we do it? We had a lot of people write into us, basically saying, "I don't have forty two Zen, but I still want to participate in the ecosystem. How do I do that?" And I, I mean, there is a couple things you could do, but nothing that you could get rewarded for. So this is a really awesome way for us to basically extend our hand to anyone in the world who wants to participate in the Zen ecosystem. So the minimum amount of Zen you can stake, you can make it just by coming to the faucet for, you know, three or four days. And we did that on purpose. We wanted to make sure that the lower boundary was low enough that literally anybody can participate um, without having to spend any of their own money. So really excited to kind of uh, engage a whole new section of the community and and of the world. So in addition to that, um, we we've already picked the winners for the March April giveaway. So please check your email to see if you have anything from us. Uh, we'll be putting the names of the winners on Twitter uh, this week in case uh, in case you want to see for yourself. Uh, we put up a new blog explaining the instructions for the sweet huddle bonus. So check it out if you have any questions at all. And I uh, just want to say thanks to Spencer for that useful tip. It's always great to see uh, the basically what we get from the help desk. The help desk, in a way, is kind of like... Uh, basically the front line of all of the issues that the community is facing. And it's super important that we listen to the customer and make changes based on what they're asking or what they're having issues with. So I don't know of any other projects that have a a dedicated help desk, but I can say that the feedback we get from the help desk is one of the main sources of inspiration for us to release uh, new products and features. Uh, and that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. Let's welcome now Rosario for Product and Engineering. Hi, guys. Uh, welcome to Horizon, Luigi. And we're all super excited uh, that you've joined our team. Uh, and I suspect the person that's uh, probably the happiest is Chronic, as uh, you'll be helping uh with extra hands with DevOps and infrastructure. So happy to have you on board. I'm collaborating with Gustavo and Lucy regarding sidechain promotion. And our vision is to have a constant stream of developer uh, developers building sidechains uh, for two main purposes. Uh, one is to inform the Horizon developer team and provide feedback on SDK. And the second goal is to uh, track developers to build on the Horizon ecosystem. And as our SDK is going to be on testnet, this is very important to to get that feedback back to our Horizon development uh, team. So uh, also uh, within that, we, we need to figure out proper incentives uh, to make sure that there's uh, recurring uh, development on the applications. And I'm um, just really excited about the, the program and this, the flow uh, that uh, an engagement from the community, from the developer community. Uh, we've also recently taken full ownership of Sphere, as we've uh, mentioned a few months ago, and we continue cleaning up uh, the process on uh, Sphere development and issue tracking. So our current goal is to burn down uh, the issues that have been identified and clean that up and then add features uh, as we've uh, had a, a more positive control on on the uh, the repos. So we have weekly session that just started this week with Paula and other team members uh, that will just uh, uh, build a sort of uh, a product team within within our our section. So we'll be uh, working with uh, the uh, the, the, the marketing team, the design team, and uh, of course, uh, our engineering team as well. 
Uh, so just as a heads up, we're also planning our next Zen D maintenance uh, release. Uh, and this will likely go out in mid-May. So we'll also be prepping communications to our partners. And uh, that's it for now. Happy Thursday, everyone. Thank you, Rosario. Ralph, would you like to add any comments or updates? Yeah, uh, thanks. I was thinking about a few different things. Um, the uh, Bitcoin price uh, and all the crypto prices compared to the government currencies, dollar, euro, uh, and yuan, and yuan, have all gone up today. And if that continues, there's going to be a whole new uh, cycle of interest into Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies and, and Horizon. And we've done a great job to prepare for that and uh, making it easy for new people to come in and learn about what we're doing and try it out uh, with the faucet and having the beautiful Sphere wallet and the, and the support desk. Um, we might want to consider looking at everything that we've got going on with the website, the blog, the tools, as if you're a brand new user, not just to Horizon, but also to cryptocurrency and make sure that any of the uh, edges that might be that we might have known about and put up with here over the last few months and years, we, we sand those down and, and make it a smooth process for everybody. Um, the other thing that we might want to do is go back to some uh, of our older blog posts and videos over the last few years that are introductory blog posts and videos and uh, tweak them a little and post them as new content. Not as much work to do that. And it also gives updated blog posts and videos that are an introductory type thing that are fairly recent for 2020 and th this time of year uh, and can give a good perspective to these new people coming in. And then I was also thinking that uh, with the Bitcoin halving coming up in the next few weeks, uh, we have a halving coming up in November. And so there's probably some things that we can do to prepare for that and prepare the community for it. Um, for example, you know, node uh, payouts are going to be going, cutting in half uh, for, for all the different types of nodes. So things that might be profitable now m might be unprofitable for people. Same thing is going to happen with mining. The people that are running nodes and miners, they probably know all that stuff, but uh, we might want to uh, remind folks about that. So anyway, um, I think it's exciting when the prices go up compared to the government, the currencies. It's an opportunity for us. I think we're really well positioned. Um, and there's always things that we can do uh, a little bit more to make Horizon the preferred way for people to enter into the cryptocurrency ecosystem. So that's what I've got. Thanks. Thank you, Ralph. And now let's welcome Rob for the final part. Thank you, Angie, and great, great comments, Rolf. Um, okay, so uh, some of this I'll, I'll be repeating from some of the things that people said, and, and the big repeat here is another uh, big welcome to Luigi. I know everyone's pretty pumped to have you, um, and adding some DevOps capabilities uh, to the what the team is already doing it is just awesome uh, and much needed right now. And let's see, so some of the administrative things, so I'll, I'll just run through quickly. Um, Rowan mentioned that we did a team survey. So we obviously always need to uh, keep a pulse on how our team is feeling about how they, the working environment is for them, uh, not just our community. I think we've been doing a pretty good job uh, communicating with our community, but also we can't forget about our team. And we learned a couple things from the survey. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to roll out uh, a team idea and feedback submission portal. So basically a, a very simple idea box, call it a virtual idea box. Um, it'll be anonymous and team members can uh, submit any ideas or thoughts uh, or things that we should be doing better. Uh, um, do that and then we can obviously learn as an organization. Uh, one thing that we learned from the survey was... Uh, you know, we, we technically, the way everyone's employee here with the foundation is as a contractor, um, so not as an employee, and that's just a legal distinction. But the reality is we, we treat everyone like, a, uh, you know, a, a, the same type of team member, uh, whether, whether or not just, they're independent of whatever their legal distinction is. So one thing that I think we need to do is launch a, a paid time off policy. So we've been budget constrained for years now we've been uh, you know this is the tail end of a, a couple of year bear market for us uh, with with our budget uh, but one thing that we can do that's relatively low cost but maybe high impact for our team is it so that they don't have to worry about when they're sick um, taking time off and not not getting paid we can change that and we can just treat them as though we have uh, a standard employment 
you know, relationship, uh, even though they're still contractors, but still have a PTO policy, uh, is what I'm trying to say. So that's one one thing that we're going to do uh, in the very near term as uh, Rowan and Leslie roll that out. Uh, and that's uh, just making sure that overall, as an organization, we're always maintaining, uh, you know, uh, the health of our organization and just the health of our team members. Now, going to uh, engineering, uh, I have to say I'm super happy with the two libraries that were just released, and Alberto went into some detail. It's the Zendu main chain library and Zendu side chain library. So two important libraries um, that are interacting with the Ginger Lib that was released some weeks back. Um, and this is just uh, uh, kind of a, a ramping up of deliveries that you're going to see leading to beta, the sidechain beta uh, and the SDK. And, uh, you know, what you can expect going forward is that we're going to be doing a lot more coding in public. So a lot of these very important things have been worked privately in private repositories thus far. And then when we sufficiently mature them, then we release them publicly. Well, uh, you're seeing some of the big libraries now released publicly and um, continued development will be done in public. So you're going to see more of a, a steady stream of development happening publicly. And then the big the big releases uh, with respect to beta and the SDK for beta are, are going to be huge code deliveries uh, that have taken well over a year to develop. And then all of that work subsequently will be done in public. So I think this is uh, very exciting because now uh, when, once these uh, repositories go public, then the community can start contributing to them. Um, so that's that's really good news. And then, like Rosari mentioned on another team call, is we have to start thinking about life post beta um, because it, it, beta is imminently, uh, you know, in our future. So these are things like launching the Horizon Developer Environment (HDE) uh, in conjunction with that. So HDE is this social gamified environment where we curate development opportunities for the community. So basically say, hey, we we uh, we want to see this type of project done. We, we need help in this area and curate that opportunity and release it for bounties to the community. And then community developers could you know, work on them independently, uh, form teams within HDE uh, and, and work on things jointly um, and, and then deliver things in public. So uh, this is something we're going to kick off with a... Um, a beta or with a side chain uh, development competition that basically to see who can come up with the coolest side chain apps uh, right away using the beta technology. Uh, and that's going to be the first focal point for HDE. But really the, the big thing here is uh, we've been focusing thus far on uh, large community development with things like the sweet huddle bonus and faucet and the evolution of the community hub that's, that's ongoing with Academy and so forth. But the segment of the community that we're going to be pivoting to, you know, launch some serious dedicated campaigns with our community developers. And this is such an important part of having a healthy blockchain ecosystem is you have to have a large and dynamic uh, you know, developer community. And uh, we're, we're absolutely going to be kicking off those efforts, starting with the HDE, um, doing a whole bunch of projects post beta. We also have um, uh, a hackathon program that was in planning, and this is doing something like supporting 40 or so hackathons annually. And with beta, that's going to be a, a big focal point on hackathons so that we have the beta SDK, and then going forward from there, we mature that SDK to, to the full Zendu implementation, but basically have developers and hackathons doing in real time or in short, short time periods uh, very uh, discrete applications using our sidechain technology. So there's going to be a whole bunch of work going into developing the, the developer community post beta. The last thing I'll say is just really uh, piggybacking on what Jonathan said about the sweet hodl bonus. I, I just like saying sweet hodl bonus. It's such a cool thing. Just rolls off the tongue. Um, but you know, the going going to the idea of why are we doing this? Well, the whole point. So inclusiveness that Jonathan made, I think, is fantastic and really goes to the the bottom line of what we're doing here. So ultimately, we want everyone in the world to be using Zen uh, and and using our products and joining our ecosystem in productive ways. Well, until we have a whole dynamic and mature ecosystem, and right now we're just in, still in the early days, we're creating these these very simple opportunities for people to participate. And the faucet was probably the simplest idea of, you know, let's open up a very, very uh, 
simple way for people to to get their hands on some Zen, like small amounts of Zen that they don't have to pay for, right? You can't expect everyone to come in here as an investor and to put uh, money on the line. Some people just want to start experimenting with the technology, seeing what it's all about. And importantly, the market that we claim that we care about as an industry, it or the dis, you know, basically the disadvantaged marketplaces where people don't have access to traditional financial services. And it's for people in these markets that things like faucet and the sweet hollow bonus are definitely, uh, you know, or um, really geared for bringing them in into giving them a nice on ramp. And then thinking beyond on ramp, what do we do with people once they're in our community? And what I'm loving that I'm seeing already is that we're seeing very, very clear indication that people are joining the ecosystem through the faucet and then funneling through other areas. So we're seeing uh, more talk now of faucet users actually setting up their own nodes uh, for additional income and participating in running our infrastructure. That is awesome. And that's just one example of much more to come because ultimately we want to create sticky users. We don't want people that are just coming to the faucet, grabbing some Zen and dumping it on Binance as an example. Right. So that's why we do certain things like having people verify their address so that we know that they, ha- they have control of their private keys, uh, which means that they ha- they're they using a wallet like Sphere or some of the other wallets that we have in the community. And that's just going towards actually getting people to start using their products, owning their keys, and participating in a productive way in our ecosystem. The sweet huddle bonus just reinforces that by instead of dumping your Zen that you're getting immediately on an exchange, actually accumulate it. And then once people start accumulating some Zen, they start having some more skin in the game. They start taking an interest in other aspects of the ecosystem. Again, guys, all just simple experiments, but moving in the direction of we want this to be an open and accessible ecosystem. And we want to help people, you know, on, on the margin where they may not have other opportunities. So it all comes back at the end of the day to our, our core values and our mission. So that's so I'll, I'll wrap up there, guys, and we can open up to any mentee questions, Lucy. Thank you, Rob. Um, so the first question is, now that Zen is above $6, does it make a difference in budgeting projects and strategy? What is the ballpark token price that brings Horizon team out of the red? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're right there on the margin. So this is a much better price for us than it was in the fives, that's for sure, or in the fours. Uh, but because of the volatility, we don't want to make quick decisions. So we've, we've long played conservative because we know the price goes significantly up and down on any given day. So I would say at this price, it's not going to induce anything different in you know, the, the way we're programming projects. Um, but if Zen gets, you know, keeps going in this direction, then for sure, it's alleviating budget constraints. And we can start layering on those, those projects that we have in the pipeline, kind of on the margin that we were going to fund. But we've just chose to put them on ice because we don't have resources. Thanks, Rob. Um, the second question is, what is the throughput of euro borrows in the reference sidechain implementation? Well, I love punting these to Alberto. Do you want to take a stab at that? <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> I suspected the decision. Have fun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, let's say that our Ouroboros Browse implementation uh, will uh, have the same performances that are, um, should have the same performances that have, have been um, recorded from the tests on the Browse, on the, on the original Browse uh, design. So, uh, it really depends on the on the slot uh, uh, length uh, decision. So, uh, as you as you, as you know, uh, the life um, in a Ouroboros Browse uh, blockchain is um, divided in slots, and slots are let me say part of uh, in terms of time are slices of this big epoch. And so, uh, and for each lot could be uh, the possibility can be can can be a block can happen to have a block, uh, and because every forger will calculate his eligibility uh, for that specific slot, so it really depends on the on the slot length on the slot size, and obviously these uh, uh, will affect the number of blocks per epoch and will affect obviously the number of of transaction per second. Uh, but for sure, I mean, from from studies that there, there are uh, there have been made uh, regarding these, uh, uh, that the, the performance that can be achieved are uh, 
an order of magnitude higher than in a in a in a Bitcoin, for example. Uh, let me say. Uh, uh, blockchain. So, uh, for this reason, uh, we can have much higher performances. But we should also consider another thing, because uh, in the, in our final circuit, we will uh, prove the whole history. So, we will um, create a proof that proves cryptographically uh, the whole history uh, of the epoch. So, that the state of the sidechain has been transitioned from one state to the other one, and that the backward transfer uh, list in the certificate follow the rules. And this means that every transition should be uh, proved. And so um, currently, um, I mean, this for sure will affect uh, performances. And uh, I mean, we're working uh, on the implementation of, of that part, and uh, and for sure this will be uh, let me say, uh, our first focus for after beta. So, uh, let me say, improving all the uh, proving uh, system that will be used for uh, prove the, the whole uh, history uh, of, of the sidechain I mean, between the two epochs. So, um, unfortunately, I mean, uh, this, this is not uh, uh, yet uh, uh, defined in terms of a, a precise number of, uh, of transactions per second, but, I mean, uh, we, are, we will work, um, let me say, during the implementation of it for the proving system to, to uh, give some more precise numbers. So, thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Alberto. Um, so the last question, <laughs> the last question is, is Erica a robot? Because she is everywhere and always online. Well, um, Erica is definitely better than a robot, <laughs> in my opinion. But sometimes I do also have the same question. So maybe we can, you know, she can help us solve this myth once for all. Should we uh, give her a Turing <laughs> test? Yes. <laughs> yeah, probably. I'll give you, Erica. <laughs> Um, well, I can say for a fact, I'm definitely human, but I do love this question because it means that I'm readily available to anybody who needs help. And that's very visible to people if they're seeing me online thinking that I'm a robot. Um, I just prioritize making sure that everybody can reach out to me if they need help. So yes, I'm a human. I'm just a really helpful, always available one. Wow, thank you, Erica. Glad that you used your human voice. <laughs> I I think everyone will agree with me that you know when I say that we you know we the team and community are very very uh, lucky to have Erica. Thank you. Um, so uh, thank you. Uh, these are the top three questions uh, for today's weekly insider. So we will post rest of the questions and answers on the uh, uh, weekly insider chat channel here on Discord. Uh, thank you again and stay safe. Back to you, Angie. Awesome. Thank you everyone for being here. Have a great rest of the day. Hope to see you guys soon. Bye-bye.